Uh, Maple Ridge, Pitt Meadows, Maple Ridge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What is job one for a federal government, or what should it be? I've always told constituents national security, our safety and security. And last night, as I was preparing uh, my remarks, I checked out Dr. Google. And it says, what is priority? What should the, the top priority be for national government? And lo and behold, up pops a website from the federal government, from Canada, Canada's federal government, and it says, national security, the first priority of the government of Canada is to protect the safety and security of Canadians both at home and abroad. You know, that made me feel pretty good at first. I thought, um, well, I'm on the right track. And I was glad that government places safety and security, the Liberal government, as their own top priority. So made me happy, but unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, I started to get disturbed when I started to think about it because as we've seen so much with Liberal government, rhetoric and words are one thing and doing is another. And you might ask why? Because I find that so much of what this Liberal government, the Prime Minister do, actually undermines the safety and security of Canadians at home, within our borders, and protecting. The Liberals are weakening our justice system, removing mandatory minimums. There was a report recently in Vancouver how just a few dozen criminals have done thousands of crimes, 6,000 crimes, just 40 or so. And it's like, that is the Liberal method, catch and release. Now that's okay, I suppose, for fishing stocks, you know, catch a fish and, and let them go, you know, it's good. But it's not good for criminals when, they're, when we're having increased problems on transit with, with random attacks on people, when you have killers on, on bail and then they go and murder another police officer. This is not right. Canadians are not feeling protected at home with their justice system. And it's a shame and it's a disgrace and it's not fulfilling their, pri their, their priority of our security. And the secondly, national security. So we have let it go, let our hair grow. Maybe that was okay back in the 1960s, but uh, it is not, it, it just let it go. We have, we're tens of thousands of troops short. We have obsolete equipment. The Liberal government said, okay, we're not going to buy the F-35 fighter. No, let's, uh, let's get some equipment to help our Canadian forces and buy older equipment, older planes from the Australian Air Force, the C-18s. See, and the F-18s. And so now they've decided, okay, well, maybe that doesn't work, it's not working so good and we better get some new equipment. So they've, they've actually let it uh, go as far as our military. And the Minister of Defence, you know, I was watching reports on Twitter also, big deal, Canada sends one tank to Ukraine, one tank. Well, then, then the, the, that would brought up in the House and it, the response was, well, actually it's four tanks. Yeah, three more are on the way. Meanwhile, they're losing hundreds of tanks and it's, it's, a, it's a, <laughs> over there. But Canada doesn't have much to send because our cupboards are bare. And it's personal for me. I was raised up in a Royal Canadian Air Force family, I was born in Germany, when the, and lived in bases all throughout Canada. And so my mind, even from a young age, was on the military and our, and our national defense. And I also served in the military after finishing high school. It, it is not a priority, our national defense. I will say that categorically. Now, Bill 34 is an attempt to address an important national security risk, namely 
in identifying, responding to economic security threats from foreign investments. And I think that's good. I think it's good. <laughs> the Conservatives will be supporting it moving to the second reading because there needs a lot more teeth. Because like so much of what we're, we've seen, what I've seen my, since I've been elected 2019 is just rhetoric. It is rhetoric and smoke and mirrors to make it look like they're accomplishing doing something when they're not. Mr. Speaker, November 9, 1989. It's a day that I remember well and the months that fall that followed and actually a couple years afterwards and what was what happened then? That was the Berlin Wall that separated East and West Germany and it began to be dismantled. And the entire communist, uh, uh, numerous countries that have been under the communist regimes, just many of them are, are now part of NATO. There's been great changes. And so it was, it was quite amazing. You know, communism, you know, people are set free from communism without shots being fired uh, in the, bet uh, between in Europe at that time. And there was euphoria. It seemed miraculous that maybe it was. And I've found that in, as I've gone in my, in my community and I've talked to people, the, the, those that are most, I guess, concerned <coughs> about what's happening in Canada in terms of freedom and security are those, I would say, from Eastern Europe that we used to be under communist regimes. They're very concerned about what they see. They can see through. They can see through the, the, the bluster of this liberal government. So the United States became the only undisputed superpower. And Western Canada, sorry, Western countries, including Canada, just began our military go to pot. But the world has changed in the past 30 years. Russia has armed itself to the teeth, and we've seen an invasion. Uh, we're coming to the first anniversary of the Russian invasion of, U of Ukraine, and conservatives support the efforts to oppose this, as do the other parties also. But there's even more of a danger that's happening, and that has, that has emerged in communist China. It's an economic and military superpower that wants to extend its econ economy, economic, military, and political power and, in and influence. It's threatening its neighbors. It's expanding control. I've been to China. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful country, but it's an autocratic government, communist government that's suppressing its own populations. And there's a lot of concern worldwide. And there's a lot of concern. There's been a lot of concern by our partners, by our military partners, whether it be Five Eyes, whether it be the United States and UK and other countries, about what are you doing in Canada? Why are you letting a country, a military and economic superpower like in China, which is now has a larger uh, navy than the United States, what are you doing giving them full access? Full access to, to you know, secrets, to your people, for in surveillance. And it's, it's a problem. And there's other, my other colleagues have mentioned some of the problems that we have had, some of the, whether it be Huawei, which actually used technology from a Canadian company, Nortel. So big concern, Mr. Speaker, and this has just come out a few hours ago, is that it came out in the Globe and Mail, that China has employed sophisticated strategy to disrupt Canada's democracy in the 2021 federal election campaign as Chinese diplomats and their proxies back re-election of Justin Trudeau's liberals and work to defeat conservative politicians. Order. Order. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. You, you, can't, you, you can't use the name of, of a member in there. I know, even the quote. So uh, the honorable member for uh, Pitt Meadows, Maple Ridge. Yes I, yes, I took a quote there, and I should have edited that. Thank you. So we... And the, some of the technology has gotten into uh, CSB, 
in the Canadian border services, in security, RCMP. We need to change this. We need to protect Canadians, and we need to uh, bring some of the amendments, pass some of the amendments that the Conservatives are coming through. Thank you. Question.